Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today I want to show you how little modeling you actually need when you want to create some complex shapes. A lot of times what you can use is a simple planar geometry and few modifiers. So I will use that today to create a simple PC screen. Um, if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see short tips and tutorials like this in the future, please hit that subscribe button and the bell to get notified when I release something new. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave that like, it really helps the channel. And if you're new to the world of 3D and Blender and you want to become a 3D illustrator, go and check out my courses that are carefully designed to teach you beginner and intermediate skills in quickest and most effective way. For example, with the new Ultimate 3D Bundle, you can go from simple cubic designs all the way to full character illustration in a matter of weeks. So if you're interested, please go check out the link in the description. Now let's jump right into empty Blender file and I will start by deleting default content and creating a plane. So let's press Shift A and add the plane like this. And I want to extrude the screen mount here, then we'll model some curved screen and then we'll UV unwrap that and add the texture so you can actually place your screenshots there. So let's press tab into the edit mode and now let's press 2 for edge select, select this edge right here. And let's go to front view by pressing 1 on an numpad and we'll simply press E to extrude and extrude a shape like this. And now we'll adjust this shape a little bit. So let's select this edge right here and let's make it smaller, tiny bit. And let's make this one larger. Just like that. And now let's select this edge right here and let's press Ctrl B to bevel. And we'll use mouse wheel to add number of segments here. Something like this. You don't need to go so dense. You will see why in a second. Okay, and now let's switch to the vertex select by pressing 1 or select it here and select the corner verts and let's press Ctrl Shift B and apply some beveling there as well. And again, you can adjust number of segments with the mouse wheel to create something like this and here as well. Okay, so that's the first piece and you can always just select these vertices here, press G then X and move them a little bit more towards the front and scale them on Y if you want more base down there. So that'll be the first piece of geometry. And now let's select these two vertices right there um, just to place the cursor there. So let's hold Shift S and choose cursor to select it. Now tab out and we'll add another plane. So let's press Shift A, add the plane. Now let's press N to expand the side panel and let's go to item and we'll adjust the dimensions. Um, I'm going for the white screen here. So there'll be 16 to nine ratio. So let's enter something like 1.6 on the Y axis and 0 0.9 on X axis. They'll give us correct proportions. And now let's press control A to apply the scale. And we can now go into the edit mode by pressing tab scaling it up and rotating. So R, Y, 90 degrees. And I think this will work just fine. And let's press R to add a few loop cuts. I think something like three should be enough here. Um, right click to release. And now let's select these words on the side, press G then X and move them towards the front. Just like this, tiny bit. And now Let's press 2 for edge select. Select these two edges and we'll press Ctrl B to bevel them. And you can create a nice curvature like this. Okay, and additionally, we can bevel the corners. So let's press 1 for vertex select. Select these verts. Press Ctrl Shift B and bevel them. We can use smaller amount of vertices, something like 3 here, just to add that little bevel there. And now let's press A to select all and Alt E and extrude faces along normals like this. And you can additionally press S for even scaling and hold shift for smaller increments. And let's do something like this. And that's basically all the geometry we'll need. The rest is up to Blender's modifiers. So let's tab out. And first of all, let's take care of the base here. And I think I will shift a few of these vertices even more towards the front scale on the y-axis and now let's go to the modifiers tab and let's add first modifier and that'll be solidify modifier 
so depends on your normals um, it can go to either side if you want to make sure where the normals are pointing you just go into the edit mode and here in the overlays you will enable them and you can see they're looking fine so let's disable them and let's actually go to the negative direction and you can enable even thickness here as well and we'll continue by adding some bevel modifier so let's do that right now and let's adjust the amount here to something like this okay and let's add one more segment and here you can see we are beveling um, these two corners as well which i don't want so we'll increase the angle to something like 40 so that should give us nice geometry to work with now you have two options if you're creating a scene um, that's visible from the distance um, this should be enough and you can just right click shade smooth make sure to enable auto smooth all the way to 180 degrees and then you can check harden normals in the shading options of the build modifier and this should work just fine at smaller scale um, if you want more detailed result and you don't want to see those jagged edges um, disable harden normals and just use the subdivision modifier on top of the bevel modifier bevel modifier creates these nice supporting loops so if you press ctrl 1 you can now have a nice smooth result like this you can go even further by increasing the levels of this subdivision modifier so i will leave it like this and now let's move this on the x-axis a little bit and let's do a similar treatment here only without the solidify modifier so you can just shift click the first object and then transfer the bevel modifier there by clicking copy to select it and then select the screen right click shade smooth and press ctrl 2 to add that subdivision and you have nice two smooth objects and this one here might actually look like it's a little bit difficult to model but you could see we only used plain some beveling to create a planar shape and then you can add a volume like this with modifiers no problem and now let's add some texture to the screen um, but before we do that let's set some render settings so we'll go to the render properties enable ambient occlusion bloom and screen space reflections now let's reset the cursor so i'll hold shift s cursor to world origin and let's add a plane let's scale it up and i will add some camera i will use the isocam add-on you can find the link in the description and add a true isocam doesn't really matter because i will switch it to the perspective camera anyway press g and z twice to move it closer like this and additionally i can go here and enable camera to view so i can snap this and move the camera with my viewport controls okay this is something i like so let's leave it like this and additionally let's go to the output tab and let's modify this to something like for the three ratio and let's make this larger okay let's select the camera and maybe we can use some smaller focal distance like this okay that'll give us some of that perspective distortion and now let's select the screen and we'll need additionally make some room for the screen um, nowadays uh, the less frame you have around your screen the better um, but i think some will be beneficial so let's create a little bit of a frame here okay that should be enough and let's switch the material preview and let's enable scene lights and scene world let's press shift a and let's add some area light here move it up and let's give it something like 150 strength just to see the scene a little bit better maybe 500 we'll see about that okay and let's create some materials so first let's select the screen go to the material tab and let's create the metal material so this will be like brushed aluminum or something so i will just increase the metallic value and leave everything else as is and apply the same metal here okay this should work just fine and let's add some material to the background as well and let's make it a little bit darker okay and now for the screen go into the edit mode and we'll create a new material slot and let's call this screen and let's hit assign and you can see this weird shape here um, going on 
and that's mostly because of the subdivision modifier and we can get rid of that by solving some angons here so let's tab in and you can see we have multiple sides to these polygons there but if you select these vertices and press J to join them and do the same for the bottom ones and let's do the same for the vertical ones you will actually create a quad only geometry right here you will see that the screen is now covered just fine and we can proceed to some unwrapping before we do let's jump into shading workspace and we'll add a texture let's press shift a go to the texture image texture and connect to the base color and then open some screenshot you saved um, ideally you want this to be 16 to 9 ratio same as the screen so let's hit open i will locate my file and you can see this doesn't work um, great so far uh, but now that we have an image loaded let's switch to uv editing and now let's select this face right here let's hold ctrl shift and click here in the opposite corner that should select everything and you can see how this is mapped so let's switch to the material preview it looks like it's widescreen correctly but if you follow the lines you will see that these vertical edges go horizontal here so let's press u and hit unwrap now let's select the island press r 90 in the uv editor and place it somewhere here and additionally we can constrain these two image bounds move this to a corner where the cursor is switch the transform pivot to 2d cursor and press s to scale it up and that should cover your whole screen so that's for the uv mapping and let's go back to the shading and when you have your screen important um, you want a little bit of that monitor gloss you also want it to have its own light emission and principal shader can take care of all of that so let's scroll down here a little bit and let's connect this to emission that should make it a little bit brighter and you can of course adjust the emission strength so you can go to 2 for example and then let's reduce the roughness to something like 0.2 and now you can see you have a glossy material on the screen but there's emissive material emissive color underneath and that's exactly what we want so let's go to the layout now and you can see you have your monitor screen ready um if we now go and enable cycles rendering and let me enable some denoising you will see that this is a massive and if you go to the shader settings and increase the emission strength you will see that this actually casts the light on your scene and to make this a little bit more interesting you can always add some ambience um, for example placing a point light um, behind the monitor adding some value to it and some additional color let's give some color to the background as well something like this for example and let's make this really strong something like 1500 maybe and additionally of course you can adjust the world color to blend the colors in a little bit more and then adjust the color management and exposure so i might play with this a little bit more maybe add some objects but basically i just wanted to show you how easily you can use simple geometry in combination with blender's modifiers and mock up your screens using simple objects like this i really hope you enjoyed this and again if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see content like this in the future please hit that subscribe button and if you enjoyed this video, please leave that like. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day.